that look and you know people have bad news to tell you? I guess they had to cut this trip short. Really, nigga? Man, if you don't get your camera... Bruh, get out of here, man. That's a spear in his chest. Get down, get down. Wait, wait. Oh my god. Who? My skin. Do not show that on the screen again, please. Is it what happened to her? Oh my god, that is disgusting. Are you ready? This has been one of the most unique experiences that I've had watching a sh watching a show. Cuz I don't usually watch anything in this genre per se, you know, killer thriller kind of thing ever since I was a I was a kid. Like I grew up on watching, you know, Freddy Krueger, you know, Friday the 13th. Are those the same? No, that isn't the same. That's Jason. <laughs> Friday 13 just Jason. Then you had, of course, you had Mike Myers from Halloween. You know, uh, is it Jeepers Keepers? I, I don't know. That's what I grew up on. I'm talking about killer, killer thrillers. It's not really a genre that I take specific, like hints. No, I, I don't think like specifically like I would go out to watch. So watching something like this, like a drama about, uh, you know, somewhat of a serial killer psycho kind of thing. I don't think I've ever watched anything that falls into that, into that category where it was just like, okay, this person is a killer. I guess you could probably put Dexter in this category, but Dexter was more, was very straightforward. You get what I'm saying? It was like, we understood why Dexter killed. He only killed criminals until he broke that rule. So I guess you could say, cause I guess you could say Dexter is in that category, right? Um, so this kind of like took me by surprise by what it's like. I didn't expect Bates Mattel to be about something like this. And I, what I believe is going to happen in this show, I think that because there's so many things going on, in this town it's about the town the town is so corrupt people just kill each other left and right tit for tat it's just like they gotta balance things somehow so if you wrong somebody they just kill you you know what i'm saying you don't get to go on trial they just take care of it this has been great to watch and i didn't know that something like this exist out there there's so many tv shows that you guys have suggested to me that i will get to eventually so i do want you guys to um you know be patient but also if you want me to get on a certain thing because this is how base motel got on my radar so quickly is because one of my top tier patreons suggested it that i checked it out and that's something that you can do you can become a top tier patreon a superstar patreon and you can suggest a show for me to watch and i will check it out damn near immediately either way i'm enjoying it let's jump into the reaction here goes episode four and i will see you guys right after for the review he saw him his brother saw him. Bruh. Why was none of this shown in the last episode? Is there showing everything from his perspective, I guess? I wonder if his brother is going to end up trying to distract this dude, try to save his brother. Clementine! Where'd you go? Help me. 
Hey, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, but um, my bike just ran out of gas. Can, uh, can you tell me where there's a, a gas station around here? <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm actually, I'm off duty right now, but there's a the shell station. It's like two miles up. Hey, uh, wait, wait, uh, which way? It's like down by okay. the water. Great. I'll come back here, of course. Oh, shit. That shit got intense real quick. Oh, damn. What were you doing in that cop's house? I wasn't at a cop's house. I was just out running. In your street clothes? I saw you go in that guy's house. Who do you think knocked on the front door and saved your ass so you could get out of there? What kind of trouble are you in? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not in any trouble. I'm not going to tell mom. This is crazy. Oh, look. It's Bianca from The Last Kingdom. Could I see her? I just wanted to ask her opinion about something. Not this week, Norman. She doesn't need excitement. Okay. I'll tell you a call by, though. She'll be happy. Perfect, yeah. Th thank you, sir. Norman. I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but my daughter has quite a crush on you. And you seem like a nice kid. And I know you know she has a lot of um, problems. She's not strong, and she's very young. Just a regular girl in many ways. So please, be decent. I am decent. Hey. Where are we going? Well, I happen to know this little motel. It's not exactly open yet. I happen to be personal friends with the owner. She is really hot. You're awfully pretty. That's a new one. I don't mean pretty like you're handsome. I mean pretty like, um... Hello there, Norma. How are those new linens working out for you? <laughs> this is my son, Dylan. And this is Zach Shelby. Yeah, we've met. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get my car. Small world, eh? Small world. <laughs> Small world indeed. Listen, I don't know how, how old she was when she did this show, but Allison from House of the Dragon. Man, I had a, a I had it bad for her. <laughs> hey Norman, I'm so sorry. What are you doing? I bought some groceries for the house. I'm living here for a while. I just thought I should contribute. Now you want to contribute? You're a real piece of work, Norma. How long have you been seeing that cop? I don't think that's any of your business. Well, I think it is. How so? I'd be careful if I were you. I don't trust him. Well, she has her reasons. But you don't know those reasons. <laughs> What are you doing, Norman? Yeah, I was just taking a, you know, the, the shortcut home from the video store, you know, picking up a few, a few movies I thought you might like to watch and take a mind off things. Death is profound, isn't it? Hmm. I guess so. You're a sensitive kid, aren't you? You're going through a lot. <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Look, I really like your mom. If she's a good woman, I care for her. Yes. So I think that it would be a good idea for you and I to get to know each other better. Do you like fishing? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've never done it. But really? Well, then I'm going to teach you how. Put the whole thing up with your mom. Okay. You're going to love this, okay? Trust me. Lots of fish. You with that plan? 
Hmm? Oh, hey, Norman. Next time I say hi to you out here on the street, don't run away. Mom, I need to talk to you. Hmm? No, I, I need to tell you something. What? There's a girl in his basement, Officer Shelby. She, she's like less than 20, drugged. I think he was running some kind of Asian sex slave business with Keith Summers. Hand drawn in, in one of the rooms the night we were pulling out the rugs by this girl from Asia who had been kidnapped and was being forced to work as a prostitute. And I didn't know Officer Shelby was involved until I broke into his house last night. Why on earth would you go into Zach's house? To find the belt. You, you told me to. Norman, I never told you that. Yes, you did. You sat on my bed and you said no, that I, I knew what I needed to do, that I needed to get back the belt. Oh, I'm telling you, there's honey, a girl locked in his basement. Honey, sometimes you hear and see things that aren't there. It's not true. I don't want you to worry, but you've done this for a while. Kind of trance or something. I don't want you to worry. Don't be scared. Honey, I'm going to protect you. Don't... I mean, he does have these episodes. Uh, I mean... You think he actually saw it, or did he imagine it? Oh, you're looking for the belt. <laughs> I just wanted to see the rest of your house. Mm -hmm. Now we go back to bed, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. He probably moved the girl when, um, because of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he hurt his ankle that night. I don't know, man. It's kind of tough to tell if he actually imagined it or, you know what I'm saying? Norman. I don't trust it. You're not used to me having somebody. I'm not jealous. You're my mother, not my girlfriend. That's not what I meant. I just mean it's new. You know, he's not a bad man, Norman. I want you to like him. Well, I don't like him. I don't want to go fishing. So, you know, you can't actually believe that, that any man is, is actually kind. He has a girl in his basement, Mom. He does not have a girl in his basement. There's nothing there. You, you're acting crazy. I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. Look, she grabbed my ankle as I was trying to get out. Did I do this to myself? <laughs> It's gonna be okay. Oh, it's not okay. Yes, it is gonna be okay. Zach is coming at 10 and you are going fishing with him. End of conversation. Now go get ready. So how was your relationship with your dad? Your That's a great way to start a conversation. He wasn't such a nice guy. He had his moments. He ever hurt you, Norman? No. And I want to be in your life. Because the truth is, I'm putting myself on the line, protecting your mom. And in so doing, I'm protecting you. Look. Okay. <laughs> and I want to take care of you. But I think that has to start with trust. I need to know that I can trust you, Norman. And you need to know you can trust me. Can you do that? Can you trust me? Not really. Yes. I can trust you. Can you give me a tour of your house? You know what I'm saying? Be like, I love dogs. Let me meet yeah. Clementine. Yeah. Oh well. Ah, they found dude. They found it's Keith. His ugly watch. Oh, they just found his watch? Or his his hand with the watch. Oh damn. I'm glad you could come and meet me. Yo, why are you still wearing these dark glasses? In the middle of the day. Well you're still mourning. There's no need I don't know what a relief that is. I'm glad. I mean, you can stand to be with me. Death is a weird thing. Someone's with you your whole life. They're breathing, present, and then they're just gone. Totally gone? Vanish. Never even get to see him again. It sucks. It's a really bad plan, whoever came up with it. I think grief is just the period of time it takes for your brain to accept that someone's gone. Because everything in your body, your mind, your entire being just keeps bringing back to the moment that they're still alive. It takes a long time for your body to let go of that exactly what it is it's the hardest thing of all let go of someone you love i like 
like being with you, Norman. That's pretty obvious. Ah, uh, young love. <laughs> hey, I wonder whose hand they found. Um, they found a decomposing hand in a fisherman's net. Did you know? Did they know whose hand it was? No, just some man's hand. <laughs> Norman, be so like. In a fisherman's net. A man's hand. Don't go there. You're panicking. It's just a hand. It can be a million different hands. Very coincidental, don't you think, though, Norma? Mrs. Bates, we need you to come with us down at the station. Why? Sheriff Romero would like to ask you a few questions. Yeah. A bit too much of a coincidence. You gotta own that. You gotta own that. I need you to tell me what happened. Well, uh, I was just at home. The police came and told me that you wanted to talk to me. Yeah, and I mean, what happened the night that, that Keith Summers went missing? But I told you everything I know. We found carpet fibers under the watch of, of the recovered hand. We're gonna match them to the carpeting that you were pulling up out of your motel. Well, have fun doing that. Come, I'm trying to help you here. Yeah, I know you are you though? How, especially since I didn't do it. I know it because I've been doing this for 20 years, and I know people. I get them on the inside, and I know you did it. Now, Keith wasn't always a, a nice guy. He was involved in a lot of things that any number of which could have gotten him killed. But I also know he wasn't happy about losing his home and about you buying it. And he's the kind of guy that, that might have tried to retaliate somehow, maybe. Threaten you. Scared? Nobody scared me. He doesn't scare me and you don't scare me. I told you all that I know. I told you I have nothing to do with this. Couldn't we be done Where'd with this Where'd you dump now? the carpeting that you pulled up at night? I thought you said you had it. No, I said we're going to test it. How can you test it if you don't have it? There's only three dumps that could have wound up and I'm going to find it. I don't remember. You don't remember? You don't remember where you physically dumped carloads full of carpeting? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, we're done now. I don't remember. The carpeting isn't still going to be in that dumpster. That was the first night we moved here. It's not going to be there. Fine, then it won't be. Whatever. Did you just whatever me? What has gotten into you? What, is, is it Dylan's doing? Why would you go to the... I accidentally threw out my wedding ring with the trash in the dumpster. Can you tell me where that trash is taken? <gasps> Mom, stop it! I can get it! Mom! I can Mom. get it! Mom. I don't know why I did I was just so angry! Angry that he would come into my home and that he would do that to me! Ah. You don't understand, Norman. My whole life, my whole life, I've had to put up with things. Norman is probably going to end up going to get this carpet. I don't know how the hell is he going to get this carpeting out by himself. Why do you always run away from me? I don't. <coughs> don't what did you think it was water? I'm not, it's just, um, I'm sorry I had to deal with her all alone. She's crazy. You have no idea, Dylan. Are you gonna tell Dylan? I would be cool if he told him what was happening, because I think Dylan would. He broke into the house and attacked mom, raped her. I was out. I came home and found her in the kitchen, her clothes torn off, and her head pushed into the table. I reached out his doorstop and hit him on the head, and he passed out. She was bleeding real bad. He cut her arm, I guess, so I ran to get the first aid kit. When I came back in the room, she was stabbing him. Not once, like 30 times. She totally lost it. She didn't want to call the cops, even though I told her that we should. I'm so scared, Dylan. 
Every minute I lived here, every second of just total fear. And that sheriff's totally suspicious of her. And it's my fault. I did this really stupid thing. Keith Summers, he was, uh, he was wearing this, like, police belt when he attacked Mom. And, and I kept it. I hid it under my bed. I don't know why. It'll be, he, when they searched the house, he found it. And he's got it. And he won't give it back. And now he's got Mom doing stuff. She's afraid, I guess. That's why you broke into his house. You get that? Yeah. At least what I thought I found out was, was this girl, this, this Asian girl. I was keeping her locked in the basement. Couldn't get her out of there. I told her I'd come back and get her out. I'm going to help you. Thank you. Is that a girl? Is she pretty? You like her? Text her right now and tell her you're coming over. I, I can't do that. It just says, hey. Sure you can. I don't text you at, at 10 o'clock at night because they don't want you to come over. Seriously, just... Texter. You gotta take the I don't know. <laughs> you gotta you gotta take life by the horns. Like I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta be straight up. That's very true. There ain't no girl texting you at 10, 10 o'clock now. Unless they live like far away. She says, Cool. Everyone's asleep. I'm at my house. Come over. <laughs> it's crazy. No, this is the only thing that is not crazy. Be a seventeen year old for five minutes. Come on, go have fun. Right now? Yeah, right now. She's waiting for you, dumbass. Come on, leave. <laughs> Go. But it seems to have a moral dilemma in the show somehow. Because the thing about Dylan, like, well, they live in a perfectly normal house. A big ass one, but sheesh. Do you want to go to my room? Where's your mom? Sedated. You can sit on the bed. Well, at least you're not wearing that dark glasses anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for helping me so much. You know what? I'm going to sound weird saying that. <laughs> I'm just not going to say it. Even though I'm pretty sure that she's off age. I'm tired of being sad. I've seen this girl in something because too. I just can't remember cool. what it is that I've seen her in. I don't know if it's a movie or... I don't think you're weird. Thank you, Norman. There was a time when there was a lot of teen movies and stuff like that. Back in like early 2010s, there was like a bunch of like teen teen movies were like dominating the market at that time. A lot of teen movies, high school, mean girls and all that stuff. I don't remember if that was like, you know what I mean? I don't remember. Okay, you know what I mean? Norman out here, you know? Okay. Norman is like, if you can get some, I could get some too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even awkward nerds can be coached. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. Yeah. <laughs> Norman, honey. Where's your brother? He's out with a girl. What the hell are you talking about, out with a girl? What girl? He's with a girl, Norma. He's a 17-year-old kid, and he's out with a girl he likes. And I hope to God he's getting laid. How dare you? What do you know about anything between me and Norman? I know all I need to know. I talked to Norman. Norman would never say anything bad about me. He said plenty. Enough for him to be taken away from you. Nobody is taking him away from me. Oh, that girl is right now. <laughs> Why would Norman be ringing the doorbell? Norman Louise Bates, you're under arrest for murder, Keith Summers. Welp. We're getting here real quick. I didn't expect to be here. It's early. But that was a great episode. Nonetheless, at least now Dylan knows. I wonder if this is what's going to make. Because meanwhile, you know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, Norman is out here getting some. His mom gets arrested. Right? His mom gets arrested. I wonder how this is going to affect him. You know? Um, it's going to get real interesting now. 
But now that Dylan knows, Dylan is the one that's going to have to be taken care of. Um, I mean, they still got to prove that she did it, right? They still got to do that. Pretty sure she's going to lawyer up and everything. Um, so this is kind of crazy because th the thing about it is this, right? Norman is very right. It's like, it's it's a it's a 50 50 situation i'm gonna put it like that it's a 50 50 situation but also if you're going to look at it from a, a real perspective because it's 50 50 in the sense of if she had called the cops that night right if she had called the cops that night after she stabbed them and killed them they would have been like but you stabbed the dude 30 times. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying it's 50-50. It's more of like, are they going to be like, okay, he raped you. But also, you stabbed him 30 times. Like, while he was, you know what I'm saying? He was um, restrained. Restrained. So how is that going to go? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But, if she had... In terms of how they would take it, I don't know how it would have played out, right? I don't. I really don't know how it would have played out for, for, um, for for Norma, because they could easily say that there's also the situation where she's a woman, so they would have probably been like, you know what? Let's not traumatize this woman any further. You know what I mean? and send her to jail because she was raped like that's gonna be proven that's gonna be proven that she was raped this is you know what i'm saying this is just the anger coming from that and being stabbed 30 times so that's gonna happen as well so i mean if she had been straight up with it you know take your chances with the law if you if something like this happened to you ladies in real life and you end up stabbing a man 30 times because you know they they um assaulted you raped you whatever report it to the police report it to the police i don't advise you guys wrapping up some dude in carpet and throwing them in, in a lake okay because at this moment in time norma doesn't really have an excuse for doing this you can't tell them oh he raped me you can't you can't use that excuse now you you threw all of that you, you threw all of that tr truth out the window for your day in court you get what I'm saying? Now this is looked at at a straight up murder, right? Because nobody was there other than your son to know exactly what happened. I don't know if the dude is going to give them the belt and say, oh, we found this, you know, this belt there tonight. I just didn't know it was it was significant. But you know, it was Keith Bob. Well, <laughs> you know. I don't think he's gonna give up the belt because they have enough they have enough evidence to in my opinion if they tested the carpet and matched it they have enough evidence to convict her so how this is going to affect norm norm um how this is going to affect norma and norman is is going to of course yet to be seen he's definitely probably this is probably going to be his breaking this is probably going to be his breaking because he might just who knows he might just start killing people to save his mom like you know what i mean because no matter what he still have that obsession he's still having visions of her you know um telling him what to do and stuff like that and he thinks it's actually his mom that's telling him he's thinking he imagines stuff he's he is a psycho if you will so this is this is kind of cool i like the concept behind this i didn't expect norman i thought we was going to probably get to like close to the end of the season and she gets arrested Nah, episode four she already in jail this is going to play i don't know how it's going to play out i don't know if if she's going to actually go to prison if there's going to be a trial i don't know but it's going to get real interesting right because I don't know if Keith has any family who might probably wants, you know, their tit for tat thing in in um in town. I don't know. So I can't sit here and say I know for sure that these things are going to happen. But 
I'm looking forward to it, nonetheless. Anyways, guys, that is my review for episode four of Bates Motel. This has been an interesting, interesting season so far because we have four episodes into it. I mean, it's only like 10 episodes per season. So it's like, you get what I'm saying? Like, you can't expect them to dilly dally too much. It's more of like they're getting to the point of what this is all about. And so far, so good. So I'm looking forward to it. Anyways, guys, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll catch you guys for the next one, man. Peace.